Today on the Business Bootcamp, we're going to be having a very dynamic conversation. We will be talking about access to capital. And of course, we will be looking at Blueprint to Business Success. But before we get to this program started, I want to make some blanket statement. Your success in business is influenced by how you see business. All right, it's influenced heavily by how you see business. Business is about human transformation. Business is about social transformation. And business is about economic and national transformation. You need the right thinkers, the right people in your organization to influence these desired outcome. The big question is, are you prepared to rise to that occasion to foster relationship with critical stakeholders to influence the success of your business? Today, we will be looking at this and so many other topics that can really help the rising star in business to make better business decision. Today with me in studio to support in this conversation, I have a number of dynamic personalities. I have Shivani Sinarain, and if you're seeing Shivani Sinarain for the first time, she is a project management practitioner with years of experience under her belt. She's also a lecturer and a business owner. So she has a tremendous amount of experience in the field of business. Welcome, Shivani. I also have Brett. I also have Clement Frank. And Clement Frank, he is an economist by profession. He's a leader. And he has a bouncing baby boy or girl that is in the making. And that's his new book a book that can literally transform your life. Yes, Frank is in the transformation business, the human, the social, and the an economic and national transformation business. <laughs> Welcome, Frank. Frank. I also have Paul Whitehouse. And Paul Whitehouse, he is the brain behind Patriot Business Finance Consultant, and he's a BFC. And if you're wondering what is a BFC, a BFC is a business finance consultant. So when you want money to move your business, to move your vision forward, the person to talk to is Paul Whitehouse. Paul Whitehouse is a humanitarian and he has a tremendous amount of experience in real estate. He has flipped a few, biz, a few real estate property. And of course, he feels the, he knows the joy of investment. He understands business. Welcome, Paul. Great to have you. We also have Elmore, and Elmore, he plays in the cryptocurrency space. And of course, depending on where you are in the world, you may or may not know a lot about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. But of course, we're in the business of bringing the future to now. And Elmore is one of those persons that's gonna help you to understand what the future is like, most likely to be and how you can get yourself prepared to dominate in the future. Welcome, Elmore. Thank you. All right, great to have all of you here today. And today we're talking about access to capital, which is so vital for the success of every business. We have seen many businesses start and fail because of inability to access capital. But I know Paul will say that you have so much of financial instruments out there. So there's no logical explanation why a business should fail for the lack of finance. The reason that you should fail should be for other reasons, not access to capital. And Paul will talk to us today about access to capital. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give Paul the floor, first of all, and I'm going to ask him to talk to us a bit about capital. But just before Paul gets started, I want to throw the question to the team. And that question that I want to throw is, 
can success in business be predicted? That's one question. And the second question that I want to ask, that might be an open and closed question, yes or no. The second question that I want you to think about is what role does academics play in influencing the success of a business? Of course, we say that academics are the smartest people in the world. So of course they must have, or we must have that solution somewhere. So I want us to talk about that as we get into, open up the floor for conversation and discussion in today's program. But Paul, I want to begin with you. Talk to us about capital. All to you, my friend. Thank you, good. Thank you, Gary. Good morning. Frank's got a baby on the way. I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. All right. A bugs and baby too. Not just the baby, Paul. Right. It's a bugs and baby, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A baby that has the potential to transform your life. <laughs> Paul, you didn't see my reaction when I heard that. I was like, I when did this happen? I mean, and I'm talking to all the time. I didn't know this. Oh, yeah. you, you know definitely, Shivani, that once that, that was the case, I had to put it out all day so I can get my hampers. Yeah. <laughs> I saw what your happened? reaction. I started to think, um, how, when did this happen? Who is that? You know, oh, yeah. You see, you see how, how Gary likes to play with words. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, right. yes, excellent, excellent. Wait, 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 you guys gonna be starting this morning, so all I do is extend the favor, man. <laughs> all right, guys, you guys are, yeah. keep things simple. You guys are fun. Frank, keeping it simple. Keeping it yeah, very right, simple. Right. All I right, Paul. You. Okay, I saw your face light up, Shivani. You're like, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, access to capital, it's available. It's that simple. It's available. There's, I, I guess, if you take 10 businesses, it's available to eight or nine of them. And in that mix, not every, in that mix of eight or nine, uh, not everybody's got, you know, outstanding, excellent credit. What makes it available to them? Money down. So what makes it not available to that one or two out of 10? Like a decline? Uh, judgments. Right in bankruptcy right at that moment. Tax liens, things like that. So short of complete disaster... Difficult credit score won't stop you. Money down turns that no into a yes. What will stop you would be lawsuits. Not if you're getting sued for, uh, you know, you bumped into a car or nothing like that. I'm talking lawsuits with your business. So that's the only thing that's going to stop you. On the sliding scale, money down might stop you. You might have an approval but money down might stop you because maybe you don't have it. But, you know, just be creative when you, when, if that happens to us with the client, we just kind of get a little creative with them. We just ask them questions. Sometimes it becomes, they just can't come up with it. But if you ask somebody a question that they've never thought of before, and that might give them an idea to find it. And how would you do that? Take on a business partner, Maybe you've got somebody who loves you, family, friend, or something like that, who can let you borrow the money. Maybe you've got another asset. You never considered it. A truck driver wants to get another semi-truck. And down, there's going to be a down payment on that new truck. Um, he's got uh, two trucks that he owns free and clear sitting over there in use. Well, that's an asset. You can pull money from those trucks. That's cross-collateralization. So I said all that just to really put the point out there that it's available. It's not like it's not available. It is available. If you've been declined by your bank in the past, like last week, yesterday, last month, and you think that there's no way that you can ever get approved for equipment financing or real estate financing, well, maybe it's true, but you don't know for sure until you talk with us because our lenders are different. Our lenders have many much more flexible programs. 
and credit score won't stop them. If you're at a bank, your bank that you worked with for 30 years and you think that they love you, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't think they do because it really is just a transaction to them. They like you, they don't love you. If they loved you, they would move mountains to get it done for you. But realistically, whatever their programs say, if the minimum credit score is 660, and you're 658, it's gonna have to be a no. And there's no way that it can be a yes. So capital is available. And then on the subject with the question that Gary asked, can success in business be predicted? Absolutely, for sure, for sure. Any plan, uh, if you just, the better the plan, the better results of success. If you look at somebody's plan or hear them tell you your plan and you see all types of holes in that plan and you're like, why, how? You don't even know what you're paying for cost of goods, seriously. You know, you can tell, you can predict problems. <laughs> I mean, going even a little bit deeper than that, if, if somebody's got some like substance abuse problems, they drink too much, they're on drugs, you can kind of predict that success will not happen. There's a lot of clues that you can look at to determine, is this gonna be successful or not? In the end result, you, you don't know. It's like who has the best chances and who has a plan to fail. And then what role does academics play in business success? Just, just like every other factor, there's so many factors that academics definitely is a factor, okay? If you are well-educated, and well-educated can come in many forms. It can come from school. It can come from what you've been through. It can come through who you've been around. But if you're very well-educated and you put that to good use and you have an open mind instead of a closed mind and you're open to new options you're open to things changing if you're able to change as things change then academics are excellent if academics you know if if you're in the position if you have that frame of mind to where you think this is the way it is there's no other way around it you can't change this it's in the book i got to do it this way it's in the book and uh that's a success for failure. You might have a problem then if you're too, if you're not flexible, if you think the only way it can be accomplished is how it's written down in the book, then academics is going to be a, a problem for you. That is called too smart to eat a pop tart. If you're too smart to eat a pop tart and you don't think things can change and it's only got to be this way because that's what the book says, then academics are going to be a problem for you. So academics, just like anything, can be good or bad. Having a mentor can be good or bad. If you got a mentor that's teaching you the wrong stuff and you don't know it and you're listening, that's gonna be a problem. There's so many factors that influence what's gonna happen to you in business and definitely in life, so. <laughs> All right, great share, um, Paul. There is so much that I have to share on this particular topic, but I'm, absolutely certain that with the time allotted to us, we will not be able to get into all of the data. So what I will do, I will give some high level overviews in terms of what a business blueprint um, should look like. And then I'll come back to the floor um, to share on the, the question. So uh, we have spent many years looking at factors that influences a business success and factors that causes that business to, to fail. And some of what we have come up with coming out of the research is that one needs to spend time to understand what is the proactive leaders ecosystem. In the brief, what is the proactive leaders ecosystem? Well, you need to have the right players on your organization. Uh, that can literally apply proactive leadership. What is proactive leadership? It's the ability to think ahead, 
It's the ability to see beyond problems, and it's the ability to take informed action to achieve desired results. Action is different from informed action. Informed action is different from action. But your core players at the strategic level, at the tactical level, must be able to deploy all of this. Uh, with time, perhaps I will spend some time today just looking deeper into this particular concept. Next is what I call the corporate culture ecosystem. Every business rise and fall on culture. <clears throat> and very often uh, you find that many rising stars get into business and you never think about the culture, how the culture is designed to impact your internal workforce, how the culture is designed to impact the ideal client, how the culture is designed to impact the public. All of this matter when you want to be successful in, in business. And all of these gives you what we call a fair degree of predictable uh, outcome for that business. <clears throat> Third, coming out of the research that we have looked at, we talk a lot about the team dynamics ecosystem. Yes, a business, you may have great ideas. You may be a, a great visionary, a great leader. But the reality is this, if you are building a business, that is going to have human transformational impact, that is going to have social transformational impact, that is going to have economic and national transformational impact, you need your team. So we talk here about team dynamic because of course we're not talking about you know a, a cake shop, we're not talking about a small shop, we're talking about a business that can get the work of business done. Um, so we talk about the, the role of team dynamics here. Then we move on to talk about market research ecosystem. Uh, and you see, if you have a business and you're not market oriented, market sensitive, you cannot be market responsive. And you can't achieve this because you don't have what we call the market research ecosystem. All right. So as Paul is right, there are many moving parts that influences the success of a business. And this is where the you know great minds come into play because great minds understand these moving parts. Uh, two more concepts that I want to share here very quickly, and then I'm going to come to Frank. We also talk about economic systems, ecosystems. You need to wear, be aware of the economic space in, in which you're playing in because not all economies are made equal. You have planned economic systems, you have laissez-faire economic systems, you have these type of economic systems that influences how business is done. So you need to be aware of the systems in which you're operating in and be able to make informed and educated decision of what are some of your predictabilities to be successful. The last that I'm going to talk about here is what we talk about, the communication media ecosystem. Now, why is this so important? Because, again, we see many rising stars. You have an excellent brand, super brand. You spend quite some time researching and you know, developing, but then you don't have budgetary allocation to nurture visibility, to nurture reach, to nurture impact, to nurture client conversion. No one knows you because you are not thinking about how to use the communication media ecosystem. And the communication media ecosystem is very broad. We talk about mass media. We talk about social media. We talk about the metaverse. We talk about independent communication channel. How well are you prepared to leverage these ecosystems to achieve the business objective? So, of course, there are so many moving parts to influence the success of a business. And I want to say to rising stars, you know, get the information because not having the information, the possibility exists that the, your business design as it is, is already set to fail, but you don't know because you are not interfacing with the knowledge workers, those who would have done the groundwork to help you to understand those predictability factors to influence your business success. I'm going to pause here for now and I'm going to turn to Frank. Frank, the question, can business success be predicted? What role does academic play in influencing business success? And then you can go into your share. 
all to you, Frank. <clears throat> the first thing I want to tackle is the role that academia plays in, in business. I've always said that academic knowledge will play several important roles in a business's success. Because academia can offer and often offers valuable insights, skills, and, and perspectives that can be crucial for the individual or individuals and organizations. I have some key ways in which academia or academic knowledge contributes to success in the business world. And the, the first one I'm thought of is foundational knowledge. And in foundational knowledge, you have what is called understanding of business principles. So we have academic programs such as the degrees in, in business administration, project management, finance, marketing, and a whole gamut of them. And what they do is that they provide a solid foundation into core business principles. And this includes knowledge of accounting, economics, management theory, and organizational behavior. Foundational knowledge, the theory. Then there's a the legal and ethical understanding because academic studies often emphasize the legal and ethical considerations in business. Knowing how to navigate regulations and ethical dilemmas can prevent costly mistakes and legal issues. The, the other one is critical thinking and problem solving. So you come from academia with analytical skills. So the academic training hones the analytical abilities and which helps the professionals to analyze all those complex studies the, uh, and complex business situations, how they can identify the problems and develop effective solutions. And then what comes also with this critical thinking and problem solving is research skills. In all academic programs, they often emphasize research methodologies. And, and this skill is valuable for conducting market research competitor analysis and, my, and making um, data-driven decisions. What about strategic planning? You see, strategic thinking where you have, the, this is where academic knowledge equips the, the student, the individuals with, with frameworks for strategic planning. And this includes, but not limited to, limited to understanding how to set long-term goals how to assess market trends and develop um, competitive strategies. It, you also taught risk management and strategic planning. So the business education often covers risk assessment um, and mitigation strategies. So it helps the businesses anticipate and navigate these challenges. We also talk about um, from academia, communication and leadership. So what is developed in this part is interpersonal skills because the academic settings often emphasize communication, teamwork, and leadership skills, which are crucial for managing teams, which are crucial for negotiating deals, which are crucial for building relationships with clients and stakeholders. And then you have the presentation skills. I'm not saying that persons without academia can do presentations or are not good in interpersonal skills, but this is where you have the foundation in how to do a, a good presentation. So the business professionals often need let me see, to present ideas. They have to present reports, strategies also. So what the academic training does, it improves your ability communicate those complex ideas clearly and persuasively. Another thing acad academia brings is the specialized knowledge. So the, the knowledge is, is, is industry specific. So the expertise comes from the specialization within the industry. 
in fields such as engineering, healthcare, technology, etc. The academic knowledge provides the specialized expertise that is essential for success in those industries. And then there's the advanced techniques for fields like finance, data science, or engineering. The academic training provides access to advanced techniques uh, and those tools that can lead to innovation and, and competitive networking and competitive, competitive advantage. And I, I, I slipped on the word networking, of course, connections in, in academia, academic institutions provide opportunities for networking with peers, professors, and the alumni. And these connections can lead to future partnerships, mentorships, and, and career opportunities. Adaptation to change. This is lifelong learning. You see, the business landscape is constantly evolving. And this is where academic, academic knowledge instills a mindset of continuous learning, which enables the professionals to adapt to new technologies, market okay. trends, and the business cool. models. And I, I, I'll stop here for now so that someone else can get the opportunity. Um, Frank, I, I must say I, I love the way that you think. And I really love um, how you represented uh, academics and the academia. And uh, I do believe that a lot of acolytes definitely need to be thrown at the feats of academic. But there's a couple of things that I want to say. Um, one is that academic in the theory, um, in most cases, doesn't give you the, all the results that you've spoken about. And you find sometimes that people learn academics in, in the theory, not in the practice. The next thing that I want to point out is that as we look at some of the statistics in terms of business and how businesses are growing, we ask, we have to ask ourselves, where are the academics in these business? And let me put some facts. In 2021, uh, in the U.S., we had 20.8% of business startups that failed in the first year. In 2022, we had 40.9% of business startups that failed. And in 2023, that's only one year ago, we had 49% of business startups that failed. So the big question you want to ask yourself, where were the academics to bring in their skill sets? So several things is either that we didn't have the academics in most of these institutions. We had the academics that perhaps had the theory or we had the academics that perhaps didn't apply the critical thinking. So you have three different platforms to look at. And however we look at it, as we look at business success in the world today, there is greater demands that we have to place. I don't know if you're gonna place it at the feet of academics because of course, yes, we know that they're supposed to be bringing the critical thinking, the critical skills. But when we look at the reality of their influence on the business success, it leaves more to be desired. I know this is gonna open up some debate, but we're gonna to come to that. We're gonna set up some time to look at it. But I really love, um, as an academic, you represented what the ideal outcome and output uh, should look like when you're working with the academics. So I give you tremendous kudos for that. But I just wanna look at some of the facts on the ground in relation to the issue. I'm gonna come now to Shivati to get Shivati thoughts. And Frank, before you leave, because I know you have to leave early, I'm going to come back to you so you can perhaps respond to some of what is being said just after Shivani, and then I'm going to come to Elmore. Shivani, your thoughts. Thanks, thanks, Gary. Now, Frank, I'm listening, really listening, in terms of academics and how academics can assist businesses. You know, this is a topic that is of great interest for a lot of persons. Um, you may be a parent, you may be a business owner, startup, 
and you want to know what to do you know is it that i'm going to send my child to do academics and also grow the business family business or is it that um, are they going to get a business job? Are they going to work in the organization? So, so many different ways to look at if academics, so he's using the word if academics can really improve your business or what is the role, what is the relationship between academic and business growth then? Gary brought some great statistics in terms of um, startups fail. You know, and, and then you, you always have to analyze why. Why is it happening like that? Is it that the person did not do academics or they, they went and they studied the degree or undergraduate or master's and it still is like this? So a lot of data is needed. We have some data and we need more data on this type of talk. I want to share two types of knowledge, explicit knowledge versus tacit knowledge. Now, explicit knowledge will be we go according to the book. So you come and you, you end up graduating with your degree and you go according to the book that is what explicit knowledge is whereas tacit knowledge tacit knowledge is really taking the experiences and emotions in order to know what to do so explicit knowledge versus tacit knowledge very very important when you want to grow business am i going to just say I did a business degree and the business book and all the business gurus tell me to do this and this is what I've learned. We also have to remember some of this literature that we may be learning is donkey years ago, you know. Is it still relevant to the current um, the landscape? Is it still relevant to today's landscape? Of course there would be some, right? We, we can't sit here and say no. But this is something that is very, very important. What we are learning, is it going to do what we want? Is it going to give you the outcome that you want? And uh, when you plan academics, that, that's the kind of you know thinking that you need to bring forward. Is it going to give the, the student or the learner, if they want to grow a business, is it going to do that? You know, we'll also talk about it from a Caribbean perspective as well. Is it the literature that is in the books is relevant for the Caribbean? No, that's a whole different story. And we'll talk hours, Frank and myself and Gary on that and Paul and Elma. We can talk loads and loads about that. And that is something that is very, very relevant. You know, is it that the learnings from the book will be relevant to do a startup in, in, um, in Trinidad and Tobago or to do in Guyana or, or wherever we are in the world? So these are these are, you know, really opening up lots of great conversation. Is the literature relevant for where you are in the world? You also have to look at it like that. You have to look at explicit knowledge versus tacit knowledge. I personally believe one size don't fit all. So if you are designing curriculum, you need to look at what is the outcome and where we can also talk about it as a globalization and the globalized way of doing academia. Very, very interesting point as well. So it's opening up, Gary also mentioned about theory versus practical, extremely important. And, and theory is really explicit. The book tell me to do this, right? You mentioned another term that I wanted to get involved in, which is outcomes versus outputs. And everything you know when you plan is it that the training that you are planning or whosoever is planning the training that the student now comes to do it did people really sit down and think about the outcomes what do you really want from this and then only when you know the outcomes of it you will plan the outputs which is really deliverables so three takeaways because there's so much that we want to talk about um, one, explicit versus tacit knowledge is what are we studying, the academics? Is it relevant to where you are in the world? We also have to look at that. One size cannot fit all, I'll always say that. But you will use the, the building blocks and then you look at how you're going to do it wherever you are for the startups or what have you. Um, outcomes versus outputs. And yes, explicit versus tacit, as we said and practical and theory, you know? So that's my point on that. You asked another question or did you ask it as yet? No. You, the, the two questions was, uh, can you predict the success of a business 
And then the follow-up was the role that academics play in influencing the success of, of businesses. So you see, I, I don't listen, I don't take instructions. I do the last first and the first last. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that, that's my point on academics. But the other one, just to mention what you asked, um, is it that the role, you could predict the outcome, you could predict the outcome of your business. And really and truly, you know, I would say yes, due to the fact that if you practice project management, you can do it. Yes. And do it. You need to. We we call it really a pre mortem, pre mortem, not post mortem. So it's a pre mortem meeting. You go into your organizations. You have your meetings with your people, and I always I I love to do this. I say, okay, well, Gary, this is the project charter. This is the business model. This is the access to capital that um, Frank and Elmo is is telling us. Is it that we're going to be a success? We've come to the end of the project. Do you see success? And generally, my people may tell me no. So I'm glad when they tell me no. You know why? Because they'll have to give me a what to do. What they don't even realize they're really telling me risk there. So risk management is part of a pre-mortem that could help you to do better success. It's all part of the PM ecosystem. Yeah? So yeah. thanks. Um, Shivani, I, I do agree with you on all the points that you would have made. And... Um, I just want to quickly um, say this. Uh, I do believe one of the significant role of academics in the world today is to provide what we call targeted performance outcome, which means that, you see, the way academics are trained, are supposed to be trained, is to predict the future, predict the outcome, and then say, what are the thesis that we can develop to ensure that we can achieve this based on historical data? based on testing, based on the application of configuration management to control the project, if even you have some deviation on your way to achieve the predictable outcome. So the big question, are businesses are being exposed to this type of leadership? Of course, if we are training academics in the theory and not necessarily in the practice, um, there lies a tremendous loophole for businesses to go under because when they come into the organization, you, I, I, let me put it this way. When I hire someone, yes, I, I'm going to acclimatize them to my culture, but I want to know that I have a global thinker. I want to know that I have somebody that, that can, you know, come in with the, the mindset to transform. And I believe that too much of responsibility are placed on the organization now to do this kind of re-education has against the academic institutions themselves nurturing this type of leader. So when they come to the organization, they're coming to push this organ the organization forward based on how they were acclimatized academically. And I'm seeing some gaps in this regard. This is not just a localized challenge. I see this perhaps as a, a global issue that we need to talk about some more. But Frank, with all fairness, I want to come to you because I know you got to run out. And then I'm going to come to Elmore. You're mute, Frank. Frank, you're get, mute. I didn't get to answer the question about prediction. OK, of, go uh, right of, ahead. Of things, to you, right? my but yeah. um, and, and this is where again I stand strongly on uh, an academic background. I'm not saying the others can't do it with with um, with classic experience. No, Frank, don't get me wrong. No, no, here I, I I'm not going against the grid. <laughs> the majority, I think that selective few represent uh -huh. everything that you have said. In the majority of the cases, we don't have it. But I agree. I do believe that they come with a certain discipline that is very, very essential to move a process forward. And I love analytic, you know, they come with that analytical frame of mind. The average person that I find in working with them, they don't have that analytics mind. So you're right, mm -hmm. but they represent a selective few. That's my only concern. Go ahead, Frank. Sorry for cutting you. That's all right. Um, so what I was thinking of is data analysis is, is essential for predicting future um, business trends. Because in the data analysis, it can help identify 
and also understand the factors and variables that influence outcomes. So, so through the data analysis, the trends and the patterns in the historical and current data can be discovered and it can indicate what direction um, and, and magnitude is the, of, of the future change that we we'll have in the, in the business. Additionally, statistics will show hypotheses and assumptions about business performance, about the market, and, and customers can be tested using the, the, the same statistical and analytical methods. Moreover, future scenarios and outcomes can be forecasted and projected using techniques such as time series, simulation, machine mm -hmm. learning, and lastly, risk and benefits of different alternatives and options for your business can be evaluated using methods such as sensitivity analysis. You have the decision trees and optimization. Here again, you, you need an academic background when we're talking about sensitivity analysis and decision trees and optimization. Not saying that if you have a tacit experience, it, it cannot help you. But they go. They can. They can propel you further with that. Um, we have a, a lot of big businessmen who are not. Don't have those um, academic certificates. To put it simple, but then on the You're other correct. hand, you have you have a lot who has. We got Steve Joe, Richard Branson, Oprah Winfrey, Mark Zuckerberg, Satya Nadella. And, and those persons are, are striving in businesses today. So I, I'll just leave with that for another time when we can pick up on, <laughs> on, on this. I yeah. love the debate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you're perfectly correct. And I love the examples that you give, uh, the opera and so on. I mean, they're a strong example of um, you know, how academic can influence success. But to the representation of those that don't even have it, Frank, they are employing academics and um, they should have the vision. When we talk about the 28 to rule, uh, the leader of the organization, you know, they have the vision. The 80% that are going to be executing on the projects that represent that business, who are the academics? they're supposed to be, you know, influencing the, the outcome. But that's a deep water uh, because there's much to, there's a lot of gray spots around that. But as time progresses, we're going to go into that. I want to come back to a quick point that Shivani made, and then I'm going to come to Elmore to talk to us about the future of uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and see it as a business model. But Shivani, you made a very, very great point. And uh, I really would like to just amplify it a little bit. In technology every few couple of years you have to go back and do a refresher course you know why because things are changing rapidly in the technological world so to ensure that you are relevant with your knowledge and representing the institution that certifies you you have to go and do an upgrade but shivani made a strong statement some of the thesis that you know, we are being taught from, our kids are going to be taught from, our donkey years old, your words, donkey years old. Donkey. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we see all types of technology is developing today. You know, there's a major shift from, you know, 20, 40 years back, you know, the, the industrial age, a lot of changes that are taking place. And when you see those changes that are taking place, but the thesis that we are learning from or what kids are learning from is not changing, there is where a disconnect comes. So when the HR comes to the organization, they're not coming with you know, that future thinking ideology that, that Elmore is gonna help us out here with. They're coming with some of those old days, old way of thinking. And you wanna have proactive leaders and proactive leaders that think ahead, they see beyond problems, they take informed action to achieve desired results. And that's exactly what Frank is thinking about because you must be a critical thinker. To think ahead is means that you're a critical thinker, you're analytical, all right? You have these tools to your arsenal 
and that's what we expected in most cases as a business leader you're not necessarily getting all of that so uh these are some yes i think academics well once they're properly trained um or life skill once they're properly trained i do believe that they can uh, help with the predictable outcome for businesses so i rest my case there until frank would decide to call a day we have a massive debate on this issue <laughs> uh, elmore <laughs> all right i'll leave you guys now. all right frank have a great day and always a Watch. pleasure having you all right bye bye frank bye bye but frank just before you go oh you gone <laughs> elmore all to you all right so in, in the new emerging tech world that we are currently transitioning into we have to be very aware that there are several new ways um, for a business model to work. For example, um, I have been able to, with the rise of AI, literally able to steal other business models that I have seen that are successful. Now, this doesn't mean that it's gonna work for my business. However, this is a great roadmap that you can take a look at and see how if you are in a complete different business side of things, how is it going to apply to you? So I'm going to say something that is not going to be very um, popular, but today's, today's entrepreneur and today's mm -hmm. academics for entrepreneurs has become obsolete. So, and I'm going to explain myself. So what's going on is that with emerging tech, we have now the rise of artificial intelligence along with the rise of the new internet web 3 and then all to the all to this we have to add the blockchain technology so what's going on is that everything is transitioning over now it's, it's starting to be known that at the at the higher levels we having these big companies coming into the space you know with their etf products however we have i have been able to be part of seeing this whole entire space develop for business purposes. For example, there is a really different thing that's happening in the space to where before when you created a business model, you were able to, to have individuals like yourselves in this call to be able to be part of that conversation and see the individual for the money and see the individual for the project management and you know to be able to make the idea grow from the vision of the founder now things are a a little bit split change on this space for the cryptocurrency world they you still use this fundamental the fundamentals but when it comes now to um, this new technology how it increases now you can have a whole lot of shortcuts so what i mean by the shortcuts is and this is the reason why i say that you know that the academics area is obsolete is that you can literally now have all of these positions on a regular company be completely replaced and increase the productivity with the with artificial intelligence artificial intelligence has developed so far in to this space of of business that it is being used already by companies like amazon um, like mm -hmm. companies like Walmart, uh, they already uh, integrated artificial intelligence to their business models because it increases productivity. So, and also it cuts on losses, which is another great thing that it's a mm -hmm. super, um, uh, super point for a business is I, if I can increase your productivity and help you lose less money, can we do that by using this new technology? And it's, and it's been working great. However, now we have to understand that also for a business, they don't just have the ability to have the new uh, the new internet and to be able to have AI, but they can create their own entire ecosystem for their whole entire community customer base. Then how can I put this into perspective? I'm sure that most people know who JP Morgan Chase Bank is. And so I'm going to put what they have been doing for the past uh, two years into perspective. They, uh, it's one of the companies that we understand that they are in the money business. 
So what's going on is in order for them to be able to remain uh, reliable in this space and for them to be able to remain a powerhouse in this space, they already started to create their own digital currency, which is called the JPM token. Now, this has already been going on and they have already uh, made this live. It's being used in the, in the country of Singapore. They have already run over a billion dollars of transactions. Now, why am I saying this? Is because when you are adopting this new technologies into a business model, you have to be able to stay at the cutting edge of what's happening in technology. And these companies have already done that and they already have it implemented. And why are these, are these companies doing this? Well, if you don't do and implement all of this new technology to be able to increase productivity and to be able to decrease loss, um, you, ha you have to be able to get a group of people, a team of people that are experts in this space that are going to be able to come in and implement this into your business model to be able to increase your productivity in your business, which is the, the biggest sales point on using artificial intelligence. So with that being said, I, there's another little area where I wanted to get into, which is with the community of your business, uh, with having your own cryptocurrency uh, for your business, this makes it makes you a powerhouse in the space because individuals, in order for them to be able to transact within your platform, they have to be part of the community and they would have to carry over that cryptocurrency. Now, this is considered a layer two cryptocurrency for educational purposes which means that you are developing this cryptocurrency on top of one of the uh, most famous cryptocurrencies that you probably know so in, in example uh, i would mention just two platforms that allows you to develop your own project and one of them is ethereum the other one is solana there's difference in pricing so you have to pick your best or uh, arena for your you know, to make a sense for you. However, this is already happening at a major scale. There's many, many big companies already got into the space. They have already developed their own token. And they all have developed and, and has uh, adopted these emerging technologies that are coming up here. Uh, and and the, it, this, it's life. It's already life. It's not that it's coming up here. It's already life. It's just that at, at, the, at the level of, of adoption, it is still very early on, so it's it's something to see and to watch, because it, the information that I'm providing, it's not it's not too much known because of the massive amount of individuals still lacking the knowledge of the space, and and they don't quite understand that this is the future. Like you said earlier, the future is now, and this is why I position myself as an educator in this space to be able to help individuals come on board onto a space in a safe and secure manner i, I wish claremont was here so that he can vouch for for what i just i was help, able to help him get onto the space in a safe secure manner and um he said he got very excited uh, because now you are in a complete whole new realm of opportunities and a whole new realm of possibilities to be able to increase your productivity to be able to you know decrease your losses and and, and this is what business it's essentially for there to increase profits and to be able to decrease uh, the amount of loss that happens into the business and these are two of the major things uh, from a perspective of, of having small businesses throughout the past 17 years uh, and working with other individuals in different spaces so uh, I'm very excited to be able to share this with you guys and, and I hope that uh, you guys gain some some value out of this and if you guys have questions that you guys think out any any doubt um, be more welcome so but be expecting this uh april 27th the launch of crypto 101 understanding the future of money and um i am very, very excited to be able to share with the world uh the point of view from what's happening with digital assets and for digital currencies and and how cbdc's are also a, a talk of the town and and they have to be uh, accounted for especially if you are going to be developing any sort of business models for the future uh, thank you, Gary. All right, Elmore. Elmore, uh, I want to thank you for that share. I know a lot of what you are saying um, in the developed world, they understand the language, they understand the lingo, and they're on top of the game. 
I'm also fully aware that in perhaps middle income and developing economies, um, they are nowhere near, you know, um, having a clear interpretation of the lingo, at least not by the masses of what you're saying. But I do believe that this is where education comes in because the future is now. A lot of what you're talking about is not future tense, it's present tense. Present tense. But just for you, uh, you are not adopting these things into your organization. Let me give an example. You spoke about AI, and I was just going to try to break it down a little bit. Uh, I can call an institution and have an entire financial transaction takes place without talking to a human because AI is there. What is that doing for the organization? It reduces the cost for labor. It reduces the capital cost of running that business. It perhaps enhances the speed of execution on that particular project. And think about when you could adopt these relevant technology to your organization, what it can do for, the, for your organization in terms of enhancing speed, efficiency, cost reduction, and all of these different factors. Yes, we know it can pose a threat to human sustainable uh, you know, involvement in the organization, but you know, there might be alternative for, for, for human now to take some time to self-actualize. But there's a lot that you go into that we have to take some time to look at them step by step and really help the public to have a better understanding um, of it. Because you say a lot in a short period of time, and I know it's a lot for a novice, a, new, a newbie, they may call it, to have a clear interpretation of, uh, of what you're saying. But great share. And uh, we definitely have to, I, I keep, I know I keep saying this to you, but I'm going to reach out to you within another couple of days and let us develop uh, a special program um, to go into this. Perhaps I'm waiting for the book to come out. So whatever Great. we're doing, we can do it against the book. Great share. I want to come now to, to Paul to talk to us about finance a little bit more as we begin to wrap up. Um, Paul is our financial expert. Uh, Paul is definitely, you know, whether you got a, a business and you want to, you know, your business is, is in technology or your business is, is in help, help, help production or your business is, you know, whatever type of business you have. Uh, as I said, we talk a lot of some of the challenges, but at the end of the day, we table solution. And Frank is one of those guys that helps us to ask, to deal with the solution when it comes to access and capital to move your business vision forward. So I'm going to open the floor to Paul. Uh, so Paul, can you talk to us a bit about finance I, and I, I, uh, give us your closing thoughts on today's topic? Yes, thank you. Uh, well, I mean, it's available. I, mean, I know I started off with my first comment that it's available, but I really want to stress that capital is available. Don't think that it's not. It comes in many forms. And the way we do it at Patriot Business Finance Consultants and Global Capital Incorporated, when you set an appointment with us and set an appointment with us, if you want to talk about this, Paul at PatriotBFC.com, Global Capital Inc. at Gmail, right below. Set an appointment so we can talk about this. It comes in many forms. The question is, what do you need? And let's match what you need with what we can do mix it all together and come out with a good result so what do we do real estate financing for commercial properties and investment properties equipment financing cash flow programs if you if your cash flow is slow well that might require some working capital or that might require factoring which is selling your accounts receivable for a discount um, if there's a large order that you cannot fulfill, Walmart, some other big organization that's not famous that nobody knows, but they put a large order with your company in and you don't have the capital to fulfill that order, whether it's a service or a product, there are, there's a program called purchase order financing and the money to create, provide the service or create the product is provided. Let's say it's a product. Uh, you get an order of one million shoes, 
Walmart wants to buy them from your company. How are you going to fill that order if you don't have the capital? The PO financing company will make that arrangement, set you up with it. They'll stand right behind you, actually right beside you, advance the money to have those shoes manufactured. Advance the money to have them shipped from China or wherever to Walmart. When Walmart gets that order and pays the bill, everybody gets paid. So that enables you to take a large order. Wouldn't how bad would you feel if you had to turn down your company and you have to turn down an order like that? Right? That because that, that could be pretty life changing. It's a big deal. If they order from you once, they'll probably order from you again. But they're never going to order from you again if you have to say no to the first one. No, I can't do it. That'd be pretty bad. To tell your grandkids, I had a chance to do business with Walmart, but I couldn't pull it off because you can pull it off and we can help you do things like that so to recap it equipment financing real estate financing cash flow purchase order financing there's still some other things mixed in there but uh we want to work with you so if you got any situation where you need capital for your business absolutely get a hold of us and we want to work with you all right great share so if you're saying to yourself, you don't have access to cap capital to move your vision forward, remember you're telling yourself a big, 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 big lie. Because what Paul had just explained is that with us, we can help you access capital. It can be perhaps as small as 50,000 US, you know, 100,000 US, and it could go all the way up to millions of dollars in US dollars. So you don't have an excuse. We can help you access to capital use the email use the numbers on the screen reach out to paul reach out to myself and we will be happy to sit with you on, on exactly who you are at the stage of your business and come up with a game plan to ensure that you get access to capital thanks for that share paul i'm going to come now to shivani and shivani your general overview on our top talking points today and your closing remarks thanks gary always an interesting conversation to know how to grow your business i love how paul so, you know you close close by saying um you could get access to capital and you, you also said it too you can get access to to capital capital is there um just to, to talk more about that particular point you know it's it's all about trust um it's all about understanding that if people you know really know what to do how to get it and i love what you said you can get it you can get it so just listening here um if i want to get capital i know i can go by ball right i mean so great great for that uh that was one of my points and to really show the importance of understanding capital to grow your business because if you don't have capital you can't grow your business you can't get in into business so to me that's a first starter right you you have to know where to get the money in order to grow i also just to speak about elmo he just threw back so many points in my mind one being technology and how technology can really improve your business emerging technologies as we say have seen a lot of in literature. You mentioned the term academics and if academics can grow your business. Uh, I have seen a lot of technology, a lot of literature and what they're teaching you is not relevant for today's workforce at all. So it's a pet peeve of mine, Elma, as well. Emerging technologies is what people have to learn. Um, you don't have to do it in a very long, long, long five-year degree or something. You do what we refer to as a micro-learning strategy. So things have to change. Yes, you're taking learnings from before, but just as we project managers will say, you have to improve it and you can develop it into different, smaller, compact literature. Because by the time you finish a five-year degree, something else is going to come out in the market. And you need to look at now, well, how do we do it? So academics, education got to change the length of time. I have seen some project management and some masters in project management. And um, we'll leave that conversation for another day. But it's it, it blows my mind to know what are we teaching people. It's not going to really 
give you, you know, you, you're going to be wasting a little time doing something. Like it's too long. Yeah. Too long. It's too long. So I love a micro learning strategy, academics. That's what I believe should happen as we get more and more and older and in this environment, which is do not have long, 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 long degrees and masters and stuff. You could do a micro learning. So there are different strategies. There are people doing it. Universities, we are doing it as well. So it is happening. It is happening as well. So that's what I wanted to contribute. And really to say everything we're talking about here, do you understand your ecosystem? You have to have your entire ecosystem so that the literature, the data that you presented at the, the beginning, which is about startups, it is it's not going to happen. You know, you don't want failure. So understand your ecosystem, understand how every single thing, it's to connect every single point. One, you can't, you can't say, okay, I'm going to learn just this one point and then expect my business to be great. No, it's not going to happen. So you have to know how to connect the dots. So project management really teaches you to connect the dots. That's a couple more points. And, you know, there's so much more. And we we'll, we'll talk about it on show um, 80 something, uh, 90 something or something. Yeah, nine or something. Right. Uh, Shivani, I must say today you are, as usual, you are dropping gems. All right, dropping gems. And I want to just expand a little bit on what um, you were saying. Um, micro learning is vital uh, based on the fact that changes are taking place rapidly. All right. This is not the the 60s and the 70s. In today's world, something can be the reality today and a shift in a couple of days. That's how rapid change are taking place. So you need to have these micro pockets of learning to coincide with those changes. Now, let me say something else on the long-term learning because you're right. Uh, when you commit all these years to uh, to learn a thesis, to master a thesis, only to recognize that at the end of that program, your thesis is irrelevant, your knowledge is irrelevant because things has gone ahead. There lies a problem. But I do believe that academics at the highest level represents nationhood. I believe it also represents globalizationhood. I'm just using these terms. And I do believe that when you find that the academic in its context, in its contextual design, is not co correlating uh, with the national trust, the national vision, the global vision, there is where its irrelevant mm -hmm. shines yeah. very, very bright. So I do believe that if there's a coordinated approach, like for example, in the Caribbean, we have the Caribbean single market economy, you have NAFTA, the developed world, and you have these, 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 these coordinated efforts. And I do believe that academics in of itself must take into focus where these G20s and G8s and all these big players are going and ensure that in a perfect alignment has taken place. But I don't believe that that is happening. So you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, getting your master's and your doctorate and only to recognize that it's irrelevant. Again, I am saying all of this because the fact that we are seeing today, uh, we have a federal debt of over $1.707 trillion in student loan debt. And guess what? We have less than 8% that are able to pay off that debt within timeline. They are struggling to pay it. So debts are being, being created. They are not having the effective use of their studies. And again, the kind of benefit to human transformation we are not seeing, the kind of benefits to, to national transformation we are not seeing, and economic transformation we are not seeing. And I have my t my data and my statistics to speak on this. As time progress, we will go deeper into these um, conversation. Uh, last point here, um, academic must be able to transform business. I do believe that when you have the brain power coming to the organization, it helps the organization leaders, it helps private sector to move even faster. 
because you know as a private sector you, you leader you 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 have so much that you're focusing on but what if the institution that is nurturing the the future generation is sending them into the organization well prepared in our program we talk about a lot of preparation but they're coming in well prepared with technology understanding bitcoin and cryptocurrency and understanding how we can build a business model around this and how we can create additional cash flow and strategies around all of this and they're helping to transform the way organizations are thinking because they are coming to the organization with that way of thinking to advance development my last year this elmore did i give you a chance to do your closing remarks <laughs> sorry about that uh, okay. no no i just want to see you elmore <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, well. no, you. No, I love, I love the the, the way that you express uh, those points there because they are super valid. And um, also, she, 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 I sparked her brain. She sparks mine back. Um, and and um, I have to say that the reason why I am in this space here is because I am wanting to educate 96 percent of the world's population that does not know understand how to onboard crypto security now in my consultancy i directly with business owners in this adoption of adopting technology emerging technologies uh, so it is it is definitely something that uh, i feel it is something that individuals like shivani we need partners management it's huge for them to be able to have access to this information about the emerging tech because they are the ones essentially who are the backbone to the organization they are the ones who are organizing everything they are the ones who are you know making sure that all of the things that are supposed to be running smoothly are running smoothly and they are the ones who also create the processes so um it's it's super important to be able to have an individual at this social early stage of the adoption phase uh, to be able to get yourself ahead of the game, not just in education for personal purpose, but also to be able to gain the knowledge through the consultancy on these three aspects of emerging technology, which is crypto and artificial intelligence, and then the new internet, which is the Web3 that I haven't spoken much on, but definitely I appreciate you guys' time and you guys' thoughts. And, and thank you for allowing me to be in this platform and sharing this information with you and your individuals that are watching. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I'm just gonna string some words together. Make academic make sense. All right, uh, with that, Sirvati, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Sirvati. I put up my hand, right? So, so, so we'll live, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, something that um, Elmo said too that just it reminded me again, and I, I'm sure I mentioned it to you already, Gary. So my first degree is management information systems. When I that's my first degree, you know, wow, yeah, you come out with a degree, your parents send you to school, you with TV and everything, good, yeah, happy. I got my, I got a job very quickly. I, I, I mean, I was happy. I got a job very quickly. But do you know what I did, Elmo, in that first? I think the first two weeks of that job. I cry, but I cry because I couldn't do the work. They wanted me to program. Well, back then was Visual Basic VB6. I didn't. I never learned that. Oh, my I could cry. So, uh, it, it's a story that I like to tell people in terms of are uh, we preparing for the work for you know the real, real world, the real world. Mm -hmm. But I have a concept and how you could do it and how you can do it with this emerging technologies thing. But we'll save that for another day. You know, you awesome. with your nice one-liner thing, I have a one-liner to our company here. You're teaching my good. You're teaching my good thing. <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> Uh, the, the sub metal shark metal, right? So we all learn it from each other. Oh, I like that one too. Metal, I wouldn't tell people. That one. <laughs> hey, guys, you know, it's always a, you know, a powerhouse uh, to start with you guys in the morning. You know, uh, when I finish with you guys, uh, you know, you guys give me so much of inspiration. I got so much of energy to go through that day. I know I don't have to worry about access to capital because I got Paul right here on my side and, you know, he got a buddy going on. 
I got you, Shivati, you know, over the project. I got Elmore keeping me in the future. Keep me anchored. Tell me, don't become complacent because yes. the future is now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I want to thank the audience also from across the world. We are reaching over 50 countries, and I'm so excited about that because when we started this platform a few months ago, you know, we we weren't we weren't reaching any place. Today, I want to thank my team who have come on board to help with the digital marketing and branding and building the platform. Today, they have attracted over 30,000 subscribers to the platform. Kudos to you, my friends. Uh, again, we have uh, less than, uh, how should I put this? We have less than 70% of those who have viewed the programs who are subscribing to the program. Uh, we just have about 20 point somebody percent, which is over 30,000 persons who have subscribed. So I want to encourage those persons who are viewing the program and you didn't put, remember to smash that subscribe button and to do so now. So you will be the first to get these programs that we are bringing to you on a regular basis. Again, if you're in business, don't sit on the fence. We have Shivani is going to help you with project management. We have Paul. He's going to help you to access capital. We have Elmore that is going to bring the future to now and really help you to understand how to you know, prepare yourself to deal with those realities and how to build wealth along those process. Of course, he talked about you know Bitcoin cryptocurrency being part of e EFT. And if you understand what is EFT is one of the safest forms of investment, we go into all of that as time and progress. So I want to thank you. I want to thank my team. I could not have done this without my team. You guys are all gems. And I want to wish you guys a pretty, pretty interesting day. All right. You have Easter coming up. So if you plan to fly kite, do have fly, do have fun and do remember to have kite sky from the white. Because I want to see you guys back here, you know, uh, in, in, in all your good health and everything um, in the weeks ahead. In the weeks ahead. Awesome. Paul, you want to say something or you're good? I'm good. Everybody have You're a good day. Good. All right, my friends. Thanks again. Shivani and our That's coffee. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to get my coffee now, Shivani. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you.